you know? And I think you mentioned something so important that uh, there aren't a lot of young people in the real estate game. Mm. And I also want to change that, you know, mm. I've seen some of the peers that I've had, they got into real estate and then they sort of left it. So I want to, you know, be that person to break the glass ceiling and also be a successful realtor at a very young age um, and also change the narrative in our country. We don't need real estate agents that are 50 years old and are boring. <laughs> you know, these days you have the upcoming young people. Good day and welcome back to the First Time Homebuyer Show. I'm your host, Esti Klaassen. This evening, I'm chatting to a young, driven, ambitious, resilient man, Mpo Boata. Also, before we even continue with this amazing show, uh, we have amazing content coming to you live every weekday this week. We've got Zamantung Guacamalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. And of course, Mbali comes to you with the Agricultural and Farming Podcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And then this gorgeous location where we are right now will also feature on Chad Vivirus' show, The Home Shopper Show, every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. It's something you do not want to miss, but without further ado, this young man with me this evening shares his story and his journey of how he landed this gorgeous 18 million rand penthouse in the center of Johannesburg, Santon, the city of gold. Firstly, happy belated birthday, Mpo. Oh, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I know you're a very busy man. Mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, spend the time with us and firstly, welcoming us into this gorgeous penthouse. I want to find out, Mpo, from you, how did all of this start? You know, this is an absolutely amazing journey and I'm sure there's been ups and downs on this journey for you. So how did you land this listing as um, a young agent, sorry? Yeah, so this started last year. Um, I was working for another company and I met my boss there, Sandra from Urban Train Properties. And I approached her because I've always watched million dollar listings uh, in New York. And I said, you know what? I want to sell like fabulous multi-million rand properties. And when I saw her, I said, can you please mention me? I'd like to get into the property space. And she ended up uh, offering me a job with her wow. company. So I took the opportunity and I think I started about three months ago and this was actually my very first listing. Um, I was looking at different listings around this area and I came across this beautiful one. I was like, I need to approach the owner. And luckily the owner said yes to me. Wow. So that's how I landed this uh, 18 million rand listing. And how has that been? Because I know, um, you know, you said you watched, I feel like luxury real yeah. estate is so, it's such a particular market. Yes. Why do you choose that? I mean, I am a fan mm -hmm. of the good things in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always been that kid is bougie <laughs> and I always love the good things. You know, I'm, I didn't grow up, you know, around the lots of money or mm -hmm. very privileged, but I always knew like I want to get into luxury and I love luxury. And also to me as an entrepreneur and as a young person, I think breaking the ceiling has always been important to me. Cementing myself in spaces that were not necessarily meant for us young people mm -hmm. or for us black people. So that has always inspired me to get into luxury and to get into those high network spaces because I truly believe that you can become whatever you dream of being. 100% listen we're all about manifesting yes just sitting here already mm. in this apartment yeah. I'm manifesting it you know you, you should. <laughs> and on your tweet a lot of people were saying I want to win the lotto win yes. the powerball to you know afford this but I, mm. I honestly hope that a lot of young people such as ourselves you know jump into the market and not only the property market but you're doing a lot of other things you know yes. in bents your, your entrepreneur uh, kind of you're very broad like yes. I said you're doing a little bit of everything yeah, yeah. and in order for us to achieve these goals to sit in a house like this and call it yeah. your own we need to you know do a little yeah, bit of everything true, true, yeah. true. I want to find out from you Mpo, you from you're not from Johannesburg no, tell all. us a little bit about your journey where you come from and where you are now so originally I was born in Kimberley and then um, I lost my dad at a very young age um, unfortunately committed suicide so we had to move to the free state with my mom and we lived there for a few years. Um, as I said, we didn't grow up very fortunate, but the thing about me, I think we were, we came from a position of wealth with my dad being there, but when we uh, lost my dad, obviously we lost everything. And I think that sort of like built the entrepreneurship in me because I saw my mom as a single mother struggle, you know, to get a job, to provide for me, but she always did. And I said, you know what, I want to do better. 
and I truly want to build generational wealth for my kids and I want to see my mom also be better in life so that's sort of where the hustler spirit came from and where the motivation came from because I remember in high school my mom actually lost a job then I started selling lollipops mm. in my class and then I grew the business and I got agents in other classes to start selling lollipops for me. Wow. So I've always had that entrepreneurship spirit. And I think mm. if you're in real estate, you do need to be a hustler. You do need that entrepreneurship spirit because you're not working a normal nine to five. You know, you're working on commission. And if you don't push, the money's not going to come right. in. Right. And you've done so many different things to push. So many different things that current estate agents are doing. Right. Yeah. You've taken, you've taken full control of this thing social media yes um i think so it's twitter and you've obviously got accounts everywhere else yeah. and i love that you did that because you are obviously younger than many agents yes. out there yes. so you know you're using these tools that we have as younger people to approach and to get because who's to say that someone who's 21 cannot afford this 18 million True. rand so we need to talk to our people True. because mm. True. we are able to achieve these things True. True. So I love that about you, Paul. I also wanted to find out from you, you know, we spoke about your journey and we spoke about why you're in this particular kind of real estate um, theme, you yeah. know, luxury apartments. Um, your goal with all of this, what is your long-term goal? My long-term goal, I always said, I want to sell luxury properties in New York City. I want to go international with it, mm. you know. And I think you mentioned something so important that uh, there aren't a lot of young people in the real estate game. Mm. And I also want to change that, you know. Mm. I've seen some of the peers that I've had, they got into real estate and then they sort of left it. So I want to, you know, be that person to break the glass ceiling and also be a successful realtor at a very young age um, and also change the narrative in our country. We don't need real estate agents that are 50 years old and are boring. <laughs> you know, these days you have the upcoming young people and that's the thing I like about Urban Train Properties. They empower young people mm. and they give you the platform because not many real estate firms would have believed in a 20 year old to right. sell an 18 million rand property. So I'm so thankful and also they're very digitally orientated, mm. which I am. Like I use social media for everything, even for my other businesses. I drive online and I think mm. what we should do as the world and I think with COVID has proven that we are moving in a digital era and if you don't use those platforms, platforms unfortunately going to be left behind right i love how you said you also want to you want to put a lot of people on you know yeah. how we say you don't want to put you on, on. <laughs> and you want to be the plug um how does Mpo plan on doing that I think, how do I plan on doing that? Obviously, I'm very young and I'm still new to the real estate mm. market. So I want to learn, I want to do more, and I want to equip myself in order to teach other young people on how did I break the barrier, you know, to get into especially luxury uh, properties and how did I break the barrier to become a successful real estate agent and what kept me going. So once I get to that point and I kind of like become an expert in the industry, I'm looking at things like doing uh, master classes, you know, mm. possibly writing a book, you know, and possibly mentor, creating a mentorship uh, program for young people that they can sign to and then we can see what we can do with them. Yeah. I also, you know, you spoke in depth about how you, I feel like you're lucky to work with an agency that is digitally inclined mm. and that helps you and that um, approves and supports your mission as yes. an estate agent, which is absolutely amazing. Um, you spoke about uh, social media mm -hmm. and of course we know social media comes with trolls yep. and with people who are out there just to bash us yeah, right true. and you know just that tweet alone you took a risk yes. you know you're breaking the ceiling I love mm. that um, what do you do when you get negative comments or negative feedback I think from a very young age I was used to it because I was in pageantry mm. once upon a time I was Mr. Teen World mm -hmm. and with that came a lot of backlash because people were saying to me you are so skinny how you can win that so I think with social media and negative comments what I literally do is I ground myself and understand that uh, people are projecting nobody who's happy and successful in their life will be out on social media and trying to bring other people down mm. the people who are bringing other people down they wish they were in that position right. in most cases so it's I, I always say like you need to be like a racehorse put on your blinkers and focus on the price because mm. I am not trying to you know start fights or wars or tours on Twitter. I'm trying to sell an 80 million rand property and once I do that, I reach my goal. There you go. Yeah. It's all about the mindset. It's all about the mentality that you have and I feel like, you know, if 
people, if we had more people like yourself who just told themselves that, um, you know, I'm here, this is my mission and this is what I, and I feel like a lot of people, you know, even within my own circles, we're getting mm. broken down by the backlash and by yeah. the comments. And it's really, it, it's hurtful. It, it's hurtful, it does so in, hurt. Yeah, mm. I mean, just to find your mechanism, your method on how to deal with yeah, it yeah. is something that we need to grasp right. and mm. use those tools all the time. So as much as yes, there's bad commentary mm -hmm. on social media, there's good. There is. And I want to find out from you, just after this tweet, what was it like in your DMs? What was it like in the comment section? It was probably so crazy. It really was crazy. Like, I didn't expect the tweet to like grow as mm. much as it did. So I obviously got like some media attention and you guys also approached me. <laughs> you know, it was so great. And my DMs were especially like as young people asking me, how can I get into mm. property? How can I get into the luxury space? And I think with that, I am inspiring other young people and I'm showing them, you know, we liked acting as if age is a barrier. Mm -hmm. And for a while I did that, you know, I started because because people would say to you, it does come with backlash when you're this young and you're trying to sell exactly. you know, luxury. They're like, oh, you, you know, you, mm. aren't you like 12? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I, I, you do get that, but just keep going, keep mm. breaking the barriers and get there because we are the future. We are the future leaders. We are the future CEOs. Mm. So, and it's better to start now. Fail very early in your journey mm. because you learn the most lessons there and then when you're older, then you, you can build a base and a platform for yourself and can be secured because you failed very early. Are you sure you're 21? You sound like a 50-year-old telling me about how I need to live my life, <laughs> what I've done wrong. <laughs> no, I love this. I love that you're talking and, and preaching these certain, um, what are these values and things that we need to carry and hold in life. You know, mm. I learned this a little bit later than you in, mm. in my journey. Yeah. You know, you're not 12, you're 21, digits wrong way. Um, on that note, you know, 21, I feel like it's a massive milestone. It mm. is for a lot of us, especially coming from a household, people of color. Um, it's something where you get like a key. Key, yeah. <laughs> and um, did you get a key? No, my mom actually wanted to come to, to Joe Brick and give me a key, but I said, no, let's, let's wait. And then I'll come home. A lot is happening at the moment, but she yeah. really wants to give me a key. Mm. You know, the key is so monumental. And I think in my family, not everybody gets given a key. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, they pick and choose. <laughs> so uh, you need to obviously have, they mm. must see attributes in you that you are gonna go unlock. far, unlock something. Mm. You know, they don't necessarily give keys to people who are just gonna go unlock, oh. you know. Really, I had no idea. All of yeah. us just get keys. Keys, exactly. <laughs> I, I found out this like this year and they say, no, there's a certain criteria we follow. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so much pressure. Exactly. <laughs> so you've clearly um, followed a certain criteria. Let's mm. talk about, you know, you've obviously done so many things to achieve this key. Mm. And I'm going to keep that theme of the key because yes. you, you're about to unlock a lot of things. Yes, yeah. Um, so what is it that, I know you've gone through quite a lot in your life mm -hmm. and um, that has obviously given you the motivation to continue on this journey. What are certain things, you know, being 21, that you would like to achieve now going forward? forward. I'd definitely like to sell this penthouse. Yes. First and foremost. <laughs> Number one on <laughs> the list. Number one on the list. And obviously I'd like to sell more properties, you know. I, I as I said, I want to be a catalyst and break the, the glass ceiling. Because even my boss, Sandra, was saying to me, um, Mpo, not a lot, lot of young people survive in this industry because of instant gratification. What we've noticed with the young generation is instant gratification. And when you don't get that, when you're not making the sales, and obviously in luxury, you don't just sell it like a jean. Overnight, yeah. Overnight, you know. Uh, it's not everybody who has 18 million. Um, so I definitely want to break the glass ceiling and I want to be one of those young people who are, who is, sorry, um, a luxury realtor and a successful one in South Africa, you know, and just sort of trailer blaze. I think that's my goal for now. I'm not really into the materialistic things, uh, but I think for me, what I really want to achieve is my highest and truest potential and also continue to break barriers and continue to break glass ceilings and insert my myself in spaces that were not meant for us, especially people of color. Right, and I'm so mm. here for that. I'm so ready to witness that journey and to witness you breaking those glass mm. ceilings. You talk about instant gratification, Mpo. Yes. And you know, a lot of young um, individuals such as ourselves watch the show. Um, what would you say to young individuals who have that kind of mentality? I would say easy come, easy go. Mm. And um, I was having a conversation also with one of my mentors. They said to me, you know, getting something easily, you don't understand the wit and the sweat and the hard work it goes into building 
like an enterprise or becoming successful mm -hmm. you know and one thing I've always noticed is that if you know how to make one million and if you learn the hard way and you've gone through the strides and the trials and the tribulations and the tears and everything when you lose it you'll be able to make it again right you know not because you've now learned how to make it exactly yeah. and success takes time you know I always thought I'll be successful at like 22 or 21 because mm. I started very early in high school already I was hustling I was I started an online store mm. you know importing overseas and selling in South Africa and I literally thought by 21 I should be a millionaire I should you know be okay in life mm. and that's not the story because success takes time and that's one thing I've learned this year and, and a lesson I've learned recently is that easy come does easy go like mm. success takes time and sometimes the universe is preparing you for the magnitude of success because sometimes you're not strong enough to manage at the moment you might not be strong enough to manage a multi-million rand company right. or be at where you want to the universe needs to train you mm. it needs to make sure that you'll be able to handle that success and sustain it at the end of the day that's so true and i feel like these are lessons you learned when you were like two because <laughs> of, of how you're talking and i um you know, you had this moment where you said that you thought you would be a millionaire at the mm. age of 21, 22. Mm. Um, look, you still have time for 22 if 22 is your goal. Go, yeah. But I wanted to, even if 21 is your goal, we have Go. three months left of the year, right? Yeah. Three, four months. Um, I wanted to find out when that moment came when you realized, wow, you've been hustling since the age of 18, 17, and all of these things. When that moment came where you realized, I'm still not this millionaire. Mm. It's hard to accept it, hey, because when you hustle for so many years, you're like, it, it, you're like it, it feels like it's not worth it. But when you look back at your journey, because they say you connect the dots of your life looking back, not looking forward. Mm. I am at a way better place than I was five years ago or two years ago. So I do appreciate that. And I think what helped me is to understand that um, I look up to a lot of successful people and I... I mentored by successful people. Yeah. So that's also something that I think young people should get. Find someone who is in the position that you want to be. And from that, you learn so many lessons. They teach me like, even now when I, you think I've made it, or I'm a millionaire or a billionaire, I, I still have to hustle. Yeah. Hustling doesn't stop. So for me, it's like, if you're not willing to hustle when you are this broke in inverted commas, what's going to happen when you're a millionaire? You need to keep up that momentum because right. it's hard when you get the rewards, you get the nice house. Yeah the cars and you're a successful realtor and the money's coming in you sort of get lazy and comfortable but you need to keep that momentum going yeah you know because you're right easy come easy go i love mm. that you said that and that's something that we need to be so aware of as young people because there are in all honesty a lot of young people making big money moves mm. i'm very proud of them and you know yeah. even people in our own circles they're doing these things but what happens especially with social media uh, we tend to compare you know and mm. we sit in this position where you're like so you tell yourself it's not my race True. we're a different place like how do you deal with that because i'm sure that people in your circle even on your social media are millionaires already yeah how do you i was also struggling with that like i think for like a year i struggled that i saw these 21 year olds they are billionaires i mean if you look at kylie jenner yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> which was a comparison for a long time but also mm -hmm. saw people in my circle you know um prospering and doing well and what I needed to understand is you need to be so focused on your grass that you don't care whose grass is greener than yours because mm. you need to develop such a work ethic and I'm not saying it's easy it took me time to develop it and mm. I still struggle sometimes yeah. a work ethic where you are so focused whether your friend is buying a Merc or whatever you are so focused on developing yourself your goals like I said this blinkers um, yeah mentalities work like a racehorse really you need to just water water every day and also you need to remember that we are flowers we all bloom at different times mm. and you might have ordered a tea at a restaurant and i might have ordered a rib eye steak mm. which will take much more longer right mm. that's very true and you know what this whole um, metaphor that you're using about the grass worry about your mm. own grass is that when you tend to worry about the grass next door you don't even see who's messing up your, your grass. grass you don't mm. see that people are walking over but on true, your lawn true. and there are people who come into our lives who do not have the best intentions for true. Us. so you're right put those you know blinkers on, on and just focus on what you're doing focus on the goals that you want to achieve mm. on that note of being successful and having these goals Mpo, uh, being a successful a luxury realtor, mm -hmm. what does that take? I think it takes a lot of hard work. I've, I've seen it even with, with uh, my mentor and my bosses at mm -hmm. Urban Trends. You know, it, it's hard work. And they said to me when I came in, you need to eat, sleep, 
real estate. Wow. So I've started developing that. I only read real estate magazines now. I watch Selling Sunset like 69 <laughs> times. I think this is the 10th time I watched yeah. all three seasons, you know. And I constantly think about real estate. I think you need to actually live it, breathe it. You know, mm. you, wa you must have passion for it. Mm. And I think people don't understand that. It's not a nine to five. Real estate is not your nine to five. You might be working for a firm, but it really isn't a nine to five. You are an entrepreneur on your own, as much as you're working for someone else. And I think with me, what helped me is coming from an entrepreneurship background, you always need to keep pushing. And one thing about me, I'm always thinking about real estate. You always need to keep it at the back of your mind. Yeah. Whether you're having coffee, um, I remember I was having coffee with someone yesterday mm. and I'm saying, you stay in this neighborhood. He's like, yes. I'm like, I'm selling that building over there. Don't you want to invest? Wow. You know, and this was like a meeting for something else. Yeah. So you always need to keep real estate in your mind. You need to have passion for it. And mm. unfortunately, I've seen it with a lot of real estate agents. They give up halfway. Mm. Uh, some we joined at the same time and they've left now. Oh, wow. You know, so I've realized it's not easy. And you need to, when you go into real estate, understand you won't have an income for six months or a year, yeah. which is something I had to mentally prepare myself. Mm. I always say my real estate journey started last year because that's when um, Urban Trends offered me a job. And they said to me, obviously, you're not going to get income for a year. Pre be prepared for that. And right. you need to be mentally prepared. So I took time, yeah. did my research, you know, built a few income streams and made mm -hmm. sure that I am ready to go all in with what I have. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure that on this journey, there were difficult moments. Mm -hmm. And I feel like not getting an income is a very difficult it, kind it of is. truth to pull to swallow, True. you know, but yet you stayed. It's that determination. Mm. It's that um, that willpower that, you know, you're like, fine, I won't get an income, but I know that when I do, yeah, you know, that income you is going to come from an $18 million house. house. Yeah. <laughs> True. So True. what else was like difficult for you to grasp becoming this realtor? I think I got, when I got into it, because it's nice to see selling sunset and to look on social media and beautiful properties. Mm. But I think once you're in it, when I started, like it became my reality. Mm. I had a lot of fear. And I didn't have confidence. I'm like, I say, I told my, my mentor, Sandra, like, um, I have so much fear. Now I'm selling to these billionaires and these multi-million yeah. rand properties. Yeah. And I, I'm scared. I've never been in this space, you know. And it was fear for me. One thing I had to deal with was fear. What, what if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? What if this? And I just said, you know what? Mpo, if you really want it, you're going to have to build the confidence. You're going to have to insert yourself in those spaces. Um, yeah, even with this home, when I first met the owner, I remember he didn't even um, give me like much attention and I was really scared. And I, I told myself that, you know what, I'm going to go to speak to him mm -hmm. and convince him that I'm the right person to sell this property. Mm -hmm. And I literally said, can I have five minutes of your time? This is my marketing strategy. This is what I will do. And now we are literally like, we speak every day on WhatsApp. Yeah. You know, he, we built such a beautiful relationship. And I also think is that fear and that barrier, we need to, it's all in the mindset, you know. Growing up um, as a person of color, you're taught like, wealth is for those people mm. or certain things are for those people mm. but you just need to break those barriers and boundaries and also it's a mindset shift shift your mindset and also understand same as the next person who achieved whatever that you wanted to achieve you have the same capabilities to do right. that i want to ask you i don't know if it's going to be uh, too much of a sensitive mm. question um but i feel like your answer is going to help a lot of people watching mm. but what if you do fail yeah Actually, I love that question because people are always asking me about failure. Mm. To me, I've made failure a habit. Wow. It, it really is a habit. I think with everything that I get in life, I failed 10 times, like I've failed more times than I've ever won. Mm. And I'm prepared to fail. And failure to me is a stepping stone, is a lesson. If I don't sell this one, I will aim higher and I will reach higher and I would want to sell the next one. Because to me, failure is not a destination. Yeah. To me, failure, if I fail, is, is not like it's a pit stop. Right. Okay, strategize, let's move. Because and, and, until I'm successful, and that's why I'm not scared about my success. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to be successful, even if it takes me 20 years or 30 years, but I know I'm going to get there because I've made failure a habit. Mm. Yeah. Wow, sorry. <laughs> I didn't think you'd come with that, drop those gems. Yeah, um, yeah I, I agree. I totally agree that, if, you know, if this thing, fa if, when we're scared of failure, mm. that's when it becomes a problem. Problem too. That's when failure sits on your doorstep. Door, yeah. But uh, welcome failure inside. Inside, exactly. Mm. Make a tea, have tea with it. Say, <laughs> what can you teach me? <laughs>
what did I get wrong? <laughs> come you know, through. Come through, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, Mpo, you spoke often about uh, Sandra, a mm. uh, mentor. Mm. Uh, so you basically answered my question because I have always wondered if estate agents also need mentors, this guidance, someone to mm. guide them. They do. I think, especially when you're starting out, it's so important. And I even feel like when you are established and successful, you always need to keep breaking the boundaries. You, oh, I always say with my life, if you cross one mountain, there's another one to cross. Mm -hmm. So getting a mentor, someone who has experience in the, the, the field and the industry, because I've seen with a lot of people, you know, you are like a sponge in the beginning. I, even it's rare with young people to find a sponge, someone who's willing to learn, go through that, you know, and Sandra has really helped me and she has mentored me since last year. I remember we do phone calls before I even started the job, you know, and she's helped me so much. And a mentor is like a book. Yeah. Because they've went through what you've went through. Mm -hmm. They were also like an intern realtor at some point. They were also starting out in the industry at some point. And they, you can learn from their failure so that you don't have to make them. Exactly. You can learn so much from them. And I think one thing that my mentor Sandra has taught me is that you always need to keep evolving yourself. And I think that's why mentors are important. So let's say even when I do become a successful realtor, um, I will get, uh, you know, I will still continue men like being mentored because yeah you can never ever be the best of course there's always going to be somebody smarter than you wealthier than you that you can just never like relax and say oh i've made it mm -hmm. i don't feel like you can never arrive until you die and then people look at the amount of work you and did your legacy of like and i was actually going to say you know if you if you're the best you're done then true and then how do we continue evolving true um on this note of evolving because mm. i love to find out from you know, young people, what what we're doing to stay sane mm. and to work on thyself. Mm. You know, we on social media, we're always like, oh, no self-care. Care. But what are you actually actively doing, doing to take to care, care of yourself, yourself and to evolve and to grow? Mm. I think also self-care, we've got it so confused with mm. the young people. And this is like my personal opinion. People think self-care is obviously it's part of self-care, like putting on a facial, taking a yeah. day off, blah, blah, blah. But I was watching this video and this guy said, you've been self-caring the whole year, then you get to December and you've not achieved anything mm -hmm. and you're sad and you're depressed mm -hmm. and you're in the same place that you were in, in January, January yeah. you know? And with me, self-care is constantly evolving yourself, reading books, attending mm -hmm. seminars, you know, breaking boundaries, doing something that you've never done before. So for me, self-care is making sure that I'm better than last year. Right. You know, internally. Not better than my friend. Friend, yeah. I am better um, than, than I was last, last year. Last year, true. That's a thing that we need to understand, you know. True. Especially as younger people. We do. Comparing. True. You know, firstly, thank you so much for sharing I mean, the amount, you have extensive knowledge on a lot of things and the amount of gems that you've dropped just today. You know, I don't want to tell people I'm older than you because, <laughs> like I said, I feel like you've learned a lot of things that helped you and strengthened you as a person at a very young age. And that just also, for me, uh, shows me how far you're going to go Aww. and how far you're going to reach and those goals and milestones that you're going to reach. And obviously, you know, by this entire from this entire chat, I can obviously tell you're extremely ambitious mm -hmm. and you've got this motivation to just keep pushing. And there are times and there are youth or, you know, viewers at home who sit at home and wish they were you right now. Mm -hmm. What, you know, piece of advice or lesson would you give them? Maybe there's a lesson you've learned or someone's taught you a valuable lesson and that's made you who you are today. Could you share that with some of our viewers at home? Definitely. I would firstly say that it doesn't matter where you come from. Your circumstances doesn't determine how far you'll go. You know, it doesn't determine your altitude. I'll also say to young people, sitting on the couch and wishing and manifesting on Twitter at 11.11, it really doesn't help. Hard work, guys, when you broke work, when you're tired, you work. When you made it, you work. Um, one thing that has kept me going throughout my whole journey is a good work ethic. You really need to work. Um, nothing comes easy in life. I understand that there's a million other umpos in the world who want to be billionaires and millionaires. And one thing that you need to understand that's going to set you apart is your work ethic and your wit and the ability to keep going in hard times. Storms come and go. They don't last forever, but you are a constant in life. Mm, I love that, Mpo. Um, I don't want to end there, though. Yeah. I do have one last question just before I say, I feel like we could chat all day. Yeah, um, same. <laughs> but, you know, um, my last question and I um, is really just, what makes Mpo different from the rest? What makes me truly different from the rest, I think it's my ability to bounce back. 
Like I fall so many times. I told you like I make failure a habit. And also what sets me apart is my work ethic. I'm not afraid to sit in a room and say, I will outwork all of you if I had to, or I'll outwork all of you um, should, like that's how I go into things. I wanna outwork everybody. I wanna be the best. There is no pride in being second best, you know? So like I said to the viewers, like you need to work. Your work ethic is what's gonna set you apart because there's a million other mpos. There's a million other kids in, in South African young people who want to be, who are luxury realtors, even who want to get into the space and who want to be billionaires, you know, and who want to live a, a good life. Mm. But what sets me apart, I think it's my work ethic, my ambition. Um, I always got this in high school. People always said to me, you are too ambitious, oh, you wow. know? And, and everybody just always said to me, like, you are too ambitious. So my ambition, is what makes me different and my ambition is backed by hard work mm. a lot of people have ambition but there is no product to show for it exactly mm. listen Mpo, if you have to write a book title resilience determination ambition <laughs> like that's literally what you preach and you walk mm. it you talk it um you you are it mm. and that also you oh, know just you. makes you so powerful i love that again thank you so much um, also, you need to let us know as soon as this this, this unit here is sold. No, definitely. I'll let you guys and know. And then, you know, our percentage as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to the viewers at home. Take care. Stay safe. Please remember, this is a platform where we share stories and we help build each other. I think that's so important in such a hard time, you know, currently in South Africa, going through the pandemic. Let's support one another. Let's hear those stories. You've been great. Pause. You've been great. Oh, Absolutely you. amazing. We'll see you guys again next week, same time, 8 p.m. on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Take care.